Well, Merry Christmas Eve, Eve. It is great to be joining with all of you wherever you are watching this, whenever you are watching this, as we enter into our last uh, 2020 Advent devotional. Uh, as you now know, you know, hopefully you know this by now, we have been walking through each of the four titles given to Jesus in Isaiah 9, verse 6, which is a prophecy spoken uh, you know, given by God to this prophet Isaiah. And this is what it says one more time. He says, For to us a child is born, to us a son is given, and the government shall be upon his shoulder, and his name shall be called Wonderful Counselor, Mighty God, Everlasting Father, Prince of Peace. If you've missed out on our other videos, I would encourage you to go back uh, to our Facebook page and watch them as we've talked about Jesus you know, being a wonderful counselor and a mighty God. And last week, we talked about him being you know, our everlasting father and what that means uh, for us. But tonight, we talk about Jesus as the Prince of Peace, which, if I'm just being honest, is probably my favorite of these titles, just because of what it means and what it represents. Um, the, word, the word peace is something that we talk about a lot in our world. It's uh, often a phrase that is brought up, especially maybe this time of year, um, and, and, and we kind of, yeah, you know, probably have been missing out on it a lot this year. If we're being honest, it's, it's probably a term, you know, a lot of us haven't been able to resonate with in, in 2020. And when we think about the word, uh, peace, you know, we often think about kind of being calm or, 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 you know, having tranquility and, uh, there, there not being any conflict, you know, the idea of being at peace with, with something, a circumstance, or being at peace with someone else. And, and yet I think that's only part of what Jesus is described to be the prince of. You see, in Hebrew, the word for peace is one you may be familiar with. Uh, it's the word shalom. It's this beautiful, deep word that not only speaks to, to mental and emotional calmness or, or assurance, but you know the way that we often talk about peace, but it also goes into our physical and even our spiritual harmony. You see, Jesus is the Prince of Peace because it is impossible for us to have the peace that we often seek without first having, knowing, and, and understanding peace with God. And of all the reasons that Jesus came to earth as a baby born in Bethlehem, of all the reasons that we celebrate and you know the miracle of the incarnation in this Advent season to bring peace was his first and foremost objective. See, we in and of ourselves, we were not at peace with God. Yes, God loves us and created us. He, he formed us in his image. He made us in his image. But we all know that, that basically as soon as humanity came into existence, that we trampled on that image. You know, we sinned. We fell short of the glory and the standard of God. And in doing so, we became you know, by our own volition, God's enemies. You know, this is what Romans 5 tells us, that we were, we were enemies of God. We were adversaries of God. It wasn't as if God moved on from us. We moved on from God. We, we traded in the intimacy of relationship with the Creator to give ourselves over to created things. But because God does love us, and because ultimately His plan for us you know, is to be with Him and to enjoy Him forever. God needed to make a way back for us. He needed to bring back His enemies into His kingdom. And that plans, that plan, friends, it, it took its first major step on that night that we celebrate this Christmas. Jesus came to earth. God crammed into a human body in order to first and foremost bring about peace between us and God. That was always the mission. But see, in order for us to be made right with God, to be at peace with God, we needed someone to stand in our place and pay the penalty for our disobedience. It's like getting a loan from the bank. You can't take out a loan and then not pay it back or otherwise you're going to lose you know, the possessions, the things that you have. That's fair. That's just. And, and there was this disconnect. There was this separation between us and God because our sin had brought about a debt. You see, peace with God requires perfection because God is perfect and holy. And since we are nowhere near perfect, we needed someone perfect to stand in our place. 
And so God, in his infinite mercy and wisdom, allows Jesus, the, the Prince of Peace, to take our place. He, he comes to earth as a baby, God in human form, and he stands among us. He lives like us, except he never sins. He's totally perfect, and still, even though he's done nothing to deserve it, he goes to the cross and he dies in our place. And because of that, because Jesus is punished as if he were us, and we get to be rewarded as if we were him. His perfection is credited to us as our debt is paid for. And we reap all the benefits of having peace with God. And yeah, that means a lot in this life and world. Because you have peace with God, uh, you can know that ultimately nothing on this earth can touch you. No trial or struggle that you face is ever ultimate or unending because the God of the universe has you and you are in relationship with him. So yes, in this life, you can walk with a sense of calm, a sense of peace. You do not have to worry. But if it means a, a lot, if, if the fact that, that Jesus is our Prince of Peace, the fact that we, have, that we have peace with God, if that means a lot in this life, how much more does it mean in the life to come? You see, someday you and I are going to die. Our life here on earth is going to be over. But because we've trusted Jesus, because we've acknowledged and surrendered to him and the sacrifice that he made on our behalf, you and I are going to stand before God and be found righteous. Not because we haven't sinned, not because we even deserve it. We, we don't, but because simply because Jesus came to earth and through his action made peace between God and us. So friend, you are no longer God's enemy. You are his family. And in eternity, rather than facing judgment, you will be welcomed into the kingdom of heaven, finally and fully, forever. You know, there's this um, story that's told in the Gospels of Jesus is, is traveling with his companions and this woman who's you know, been bleeding for, for years. She's had this ailment. Um, just through faith decides, you know, if I can just reach out and touch Jesus, then... I'll be healed. And, and so she reaches out for him in a crowd and touches his garment and she's instantly healed. And Jesus feels power um, come out from him. And he turns around and he's looking to see who, uh, you know, who, who touched him. And um, you know, this woman finally comes forward. And I find it interesting that Jesus um, tells her, you, you know, you know, that that. He says the, the famous thing that we know is that, you know, that her faith, you know, has made her well. But it's interesting that before he says that, he says, go in peace. And again, that peace wasn't just a sense of calm or, or a sense of assurance. It was an understanding that, that because Jesus healed her, you know, because, because Jesus had fixed the problem, because he is the Prince of Peace, there was nothing standing between her and him. And the same is true of us. Jesus has, by his perfect life, his death on the cross and his resurrection, he has healed what needed to be healed in us. He has fixed the problem that we have of, of sin. And I think he says the same thing to us, that we can go in peace because there's nothing standing between, between us and between our Prince of Peace. And so, friends, I just encourage you tonight, and I encourage you in, in the rest of this year, and as we enter into 2021, may that, may that plan that, that God so perfectly executed, may that Savior, uh, so, so perfect in his sacrifice, you know, may that truth that, that now nothing stands between you and God, may that be your focus in this season. I know this year has been rough, but in this moment, as we are one more sleep away from Christmas Eve, the culmination of this season of Advent, may we turn our eyes on this Jesus, who, who yes, was born as a baby of a, of a virgin in Bethlehem, but who we know is so much more than that. It's because Jesus is a wonderful counselor, may his 
experience and his wisdom and his love comfort you. Because Jesus is mighty God, may his strength and power uphold you. Because Jesus is everlasting Father, may his consistent presence lead you. And because Jesus is Prince of Peace, may his sacrifice and his stand in your place redeem you. Um, on behalf of, of FBCW and our, and our faith family, to your faith family, we just want to wish you a Merry Christmas.